Okay, this how-to video is going to show you how to use the cross-section editor inside PCB editor. I can launch the cross-section editor several ways. I can type X section at the command line. I can use the icon for cross-section or I can use the setup cross-section menu entry. This launches the cross-section editor. Um, this is going to give me all the information I need for my PCB stack up, for my different number of layers, um, the materials that's going to be used. I can manually add the layers from a right click and do an add layer uh, above and below, add layer pairs, add layer section, which I'm going to show you in a second. Um, I can also do something like import a technology file. So if I've already got an existing technology file, that, that a four layer board, a six layer board, an eight layer board, etc., um, I can use, reuse that. Um, I can also import an IPC2581 file, which is a, a new format that's been around for a while. Um, and fabricators can actually export and send you an IPC2581 file that will include the cross-section of the PCB. So we can do a right-click right uh, add layer pair above, which would effectively add a pair, so it would add the conductor and the dielectric together. If I did a right-click add layer above, that's going to add a single line entry, so I'd have to do that multiple times if I'm trying to build up a cross-section of a PCB and do it manually. There's also an option here to do a right-click add layer. So if I know that I need to add some conductors, I want to add three more conductor layers, when I click on add, effectively, it builds all four inner layers for me, so I've now got a six layer PCB. So let's just go in and what we'll do is we'll start to rename some of these. So we'll call this one uh, inner one. This one's gonna be called flex one, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a cross section or a different cross section area um, inside this PCB. So I'm doing a flexi rigid style PCB. So I've got flex one, flex two, and I'm gonna do inner four as well. I've now effectively defined the cross-section of my PCB. So for the dielectrics, I can be very specific about the type of dielectric I'm using. If it's going to be uh, effectively a core-based material or a bit of bond ply. Um, so I can, say I can have a, a core material, then I'd have a conductor, then I'm going to have a bit of pre-preg, then I'm going to have another core material. And work your way through how you want to define the cross-section of the PCB. Um, We'll make that one a core material, uh, sorry, a prepreg material. And these information is then coming across changing the physical material type. From a copper point of view, if we wanted to use, say, copper foil, we've got the different options for copper foil. There's different platings here for gold, there's some silver options. So this list is a lot more um, extensive. I've then defined effectively the default cross section of my PCB. So what I want to do now is I want to effectively set up. Um, the second cross section maybe for the flexi area. So if I go to the, the view and go to multi stack ups mode, I can double click here to add the stack up. I can add a stack up called flexi one. Uh, I'm just gonna include all the default layers and click okay. I effectively now have two different cross sections and you can see the two different cross sections in the viewer over here. Then what we do is we start to remove the layers that we don't want to be included on flexi one. So we'll remove the layers from flexi one so now effectively we have a conductor layer for flexi one with a bit of dielectric and the second flexible layer and then the primary stack up and we another video will show you how to kind of set the zones up to use this specific cross section once we've done the default stack up we might want to start to include some some mask layers layers that you know not from a conductor point of view but we're not we might want to output this information as part of the ipc2581 file or also part of a uh, uh a, 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 like a cross section drawing so if we right mouse button above the word top, we can do the add layers feature. Now here we have some mask layers. We've got some design defined mask layers that came to provide you by default. So obviously I've got things like my solder masks, some gold layers, some carbon, some cover layers. But I can also have some user defined ones. So I've got a site defined mask layer here as well. So let's start off. We'll add a solder mask top. That's going to be solder mask. And that's going to use, a, let's use the flexible solder mask LPI and we'll add that layer so that then effectively adds the layer the mask and the thickness to the cross-section information I then want to add an adhesive now adhesive isn't a default design based one so what we're going to do is we'll go to the, the custom defined one or the, the, the site debug defined one we'll add the adhesive top the adhesive top is going to be a dielectric adhesive and it's going to be an, an epoxy adhesive so we'll add that information I then want to add the cover lay the cover lay is going to be a design based one so we'll find the cover lay and that's just going to use some polyimide we'll click on add and then finally I want to add a stiffener to the top 
and the stiffener is just going to use uh, a default bit of FR4 and we'll add that information. That's defined effectively the top of my PCB. Um, to do the bottom, right click add layers. And this time we'll start at the bottom. So I want solder mask bottom. I'm going to add solder mask and I'm going to do the flexible solder mask again. I then want to add some adhesive again. So let's go to the site based one. Bottom, adhesive bottom, dielectric adhesive. I'm going to add that. I then want to add the cover lay. So we'll add the cover lay bottom as the defaults. And then finally, I want to add some gold. So it's a conductive gold. And there's my soft gold added at the top. So I've now effectively defined all the mask layers for my PCB. I can actually uh, adjust those. So if I were to put these in the wrong order, I can do an edit, mask layer order. There's effectively a list of all my layers. So I can obviously move these up and down if I had made a mistake. In this example, I didn't. But that gives me the default section of my PCB. I can then obviously look at the primary and the flexi, all, all the stack ups to start to see the different stack ups of the PCB as I'm working through. If we look at the primary stack up, I can obviously expand and contract these. So if I expand the physical, this is now where I would put the unused pad suppression if I was using the dynamic pad suppression feature inside PCB editor. Um, I can enable which layers I want to be effectively uh, having the pads suppressed when I'm not using them from a routing point of view. I also can add my embedded component information here if I'm using the embedded technology. And also I've got my signal integrity, so from an impedance point of view, if I'm starting to calculate the impedance, that layer information is also defined here. Once I'm happy with that, I can actually lock the cross section to stop people adding, adding layers and adjusting layers as I'm going along. And then once I click apply, my visibility tab now updates with all of my default cross section information.